Um, okay. So this week, in a normal year, we would have two par- We would have two parshas. And one this week we spread it over. This year we spread it over two weeks, and we have Yaakov the good day, which I'm sure you know is. The Mishkan, the Mishkan, and it is the repeat, essentially, of Truma Tzava, though in the opposite order, right? Truma Tzava is the instructions of the Mishkan, and Vayaka Pagude is the yeah, is the actual implementation of those laws. Now, let's leave aside Rashi, who thinks that the Truma Tzava is out of order. Well, let's take um, let's take the Ramban. The Ramban assumes the Parsha is actually in order. Either there was the Tivu of the Mishkan, presumably the end of Harsinai. And then the Egel, and then there was the implementation. Um, now, one of the questions that people always are bothered by in this parsha is luck. It's 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 great that we're going to repeat. You know, you really could have just accomplished all of Vayakabakude Pachod Oyoter with a few psukim that said something like, "And the Jews did as as Hashem commanded." Maybe maybe you want to throw in a few psukim to acknowledge the fact that they did it in the proper architectural order rather than the proper theological order, right? That they started with the, the outside and then moved in rather than starting with the Aron and then moving moving out. But why do we repeat? We took him. Or why do we literally just repeat everything in detail down to the last, the last, you know, the last stitch, the last you know, hammer blow of everything that is done in the Mishkan, right? It's just it just seems totally superfluous, especially if you are in a uh, you know Chazal like framework where you're looking for what has become termed as omni significance, right? And every word has something to add. Right? What exactly is being added? Like I understand. So kind of makes sense. Why? Kind of weird to phrase and they did it when they didn't do it. Yeah, they had the story before they did it. No, no, so, yeah, but still, even according to the Ramban, even according to the Ramban, you could say, Trumit Savadel details, then Kitisa, and then the Bazar will say, and then after the Egel, they built the Mishkan, Kasher, Amar Hashem Moshe. Right? Like, why, why do we have to repeat every detail? It's just like a copy and paste. Look, there's certain things that emerge that are important in the repetition, but it's not like Chidushim. Right, sure, it emphasizes Kasher at Siva Hashem at Moshe a hundred times, which we can talk about why that is, right? Maybe we'll talk about that to, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that to, tomorrow. Um, but why repeat it? Right, tell me, why, why do we repeat it in painstaking detail the same way we did? You know, you could have, there are many ways you could have summarized this. Obviously the changes There aren't really much, there aren't changes in terms of the actual building. Like the order is, you're right, the order. But you could have, you could have said, okay, and they did it starting with, the, I mean, Right? Or you could have just said, Vayas et Hamishkan, Vayas et Haron, right? You could have shifted the order without copying all the details. Right? You could have said, Vayas et Hamishkan, Vayas et Haron, Vayas et Haron, Hashulchan. Right? You still could have done that, right? You could have indicated the order, but why literally just repeat all the details? Um, so, Rubuchamzin used to say right, that. Um, to understand it, you need a, uh, and this was, you know, his expansion of the Ramban, um, you need a, um, you need to understand, uh, you know, he gave a mashal to understand the context. He said, imagine the following, you know, you have a couple who, they're engaged, right, they go out for years, whatever, right, not a firm couple, I don't know, right, they, they, go, they go out for years, right, they've been building their relationship, finally he proposes in some romantic, whatever, I don't know, right, and they get engaged, what, yeah, they're not from a person with a mission to right, exactly, um, and then what do they do, yes, then what do they do, they, uh, they decide that they're going to buy a house, um, and they spend the next few months planning the house, Right? So, Luchlin says, if you imagine this, right, every act that they're involved in is an expression of their, of their love. Right? You know, they're imagining their home together. Right? They go, they buy the house, and then they go to the planners, and they start, you know, they start imagining, okay, we need a big dining room table. 
right? Because, you know, we really want to throw parties, right? We're really social. We love having over our friends. We need, we need a big dining room table, right? And, you know, we need this type of, uh, of couch because I want a couch, you know, I, I don't want a leather couch. I want a, uh, you know, a cloth couch because I like sleeping on the couch. And I can just imagine, you know, as, you know, I don't know, watching TV together and falling asleep on the, on the couch, right? Whatever. And that's one level of intimacy, right? And then they start, you know, buying beds, right? And they start talking about their room, right? And that's even more intimate, right? Because now they're starting to imagine what it'll be like when they're, when they're sleeping in, in the same room, the same bed, and they're imagining what they want in the bed. And then they start thinking, well, you know, how many rooms do we need for, for kids that we're going to have? Right? Every detail, right, is a, is a way of manifesting the relationship that they have. And then a week before the wedding, um, the bride runs off with the best man. Right? 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 And they call off the wedding and it's a disaster. Um, you know, they call off the, uh, the house, they call off the whatever, right? You know, they, I don't know how they did this, right? They, they call off the furniture, they call off, they call off everything. And in the meantime, it doesn't work out well, shocking, right? And slowly they realize they're both miserable and some friends intercede on their behalf. And they say, you know, it's time for you to, uh, to try this again. And the husband, or not the husband, right, the uh, whatever, the engaged couple, they decide they're willing to try it again. And they slowly rebuild trust. And they decide they're going to try it again. They get engaged again. And this time again, they want to buy a house. But this time... When they want to buy the house, they just go into the furniture place and they say, look, give us the floor model, right? Why? So they're looking to the right, the, right well, why do they do that? Because uh, they may build a, re- rebuild the relationship, but it's too painful to go through that again, right? It just, you can't, right? It's very hard, even if they're willing to get married again because they think it's the best thing, it's very hard to rebuild that same level of intimacy that you had before and, you know, anything that reminds you of the pre-sin state, so to speak, is painful. So now Rilok Hamzin said, Right? That's essentially what happens with, right, with God, right? They get married, right, at Har Sinai. The Jews and God get married at Har Sinai and they... And Hashem says, I'm willing to build a house with you. And he goes into painstaking detail. What will it take for me to come down and in whatever that means, live in this world? Right? Which is a... Right? Which is an absurd expression of intimacy for God, who doesn't really need a place to live at all, but he says, I want you to build me on b'shachanti b'toham, so that I will live amongst you. Right? Not amongst them, but fundamentally amongst you. And then, right... After God has gone through all these details and all the planning, God, right, the Jews then run off with, with an egel, right, which in the mashal of the Torah is consistently referred to as adultery, right? right I mean, this is true, right? Vayi is new. Right? There's a reason that idolatry is referred to as nut. Right? Vayi is new. Because it is nut, right? If, if the relationship of God and the Jewish people is Alpi Mashal, that of a married couple, then Avodazara is Alpi Mashal adultery, right? That's that's the Mashal throughout. You see it in Yushayo, right? You see it in its strongest form in Hoshea, right? Hoshea, where Hashem commands Hoshea to marry a prostitute as a symbolic act to represent the 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 treason of the Jewish people, right? In a, and have children from this uh, from this marriage with a prostitute, right? Um, but then Moshe. Right, the friend here manages to intercede, whatever that means, and convince God not to destroy them, and then convince God to rebuild the relationship. Right? It's not enough that you don't kill them, but we won't go to Eretz Yisrael unless you come with us. And Hashem said, "I can't. I can't be amongst you. If I'm amongst you, I'll destroy them." And Moshe says, "No, make a new Brit in which you can handle it." Right? It's the second Brit. Right? God said in the original Brit before the Yigmol Midar I mean, before God expresses Himself through mercy, the consequence of God being present amongst the Jewish people and they sin is death. And therefore, Moshe negotiates a new relationship of Rachamim. And now, Rav Lachim says, in a human relationship, at that point, God would have said, look, I'm willing to rebuild a relationship, but it's on different terms, and part of those different terms is the level of intimacy is not the same. Kamash Malan, that's not true. Right, Kamash Malan, that even though the relationship is on different terms, right, even though, now that he's a Rachamim, God is not like human beings. And if he says he's going to be re- re- rebuild the relationship, he's going to forgive 
and he's going to still come and live amongst the Jewish people, then it is going to be with the same intensity that he planned before. Because God doesn't hold grudges, and tshuva is actually capable of reversing time. And there, Lohanzin argued that's the purpose of Ayakob Akudeh. That we go through the exact details so that God says, it's not just that I'm living amongst you, but I'm willing to invest the same into this relationship, so to speak, as I was, was, I was willing to do before the sin of the ego. And that's not, that's not a given. And therefore, the painstaking detail here in Vayakob Akudeh, the Chiddush is that God was willing to repeat it despite the fact of the ego. And therefore, the Mashal and Nishal break down on purpose to show you that God, the way that God negotiates relationships is not identical to the way human beings would in the same type of relationship had it been reflected through the human lens. Okay?